Let's stop it. You know, you totally know what that is. I know what it is. Okay. I don't know what it's doing. I guess Just it's push the button. It, it, oh, that's what? my speaker. That's a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. What? The DJ hero. So we're just waiting. You can't see the flower chair. All right, hang on. So I'm, my periscopers can't see the flower chair. Uh, down there you can see the shirt that I actually wear when I am trying to be professional. Uh, we're going to talk about RESPA. We're going to talk about... Um, shared uh, marketing agreements and things like that. I'm hoping everybody is uh, on board with getting some great information, but I have to also tell you that we do have our uh, compliance uh, department here. So Heather, do you wanna say hi to the people? Sure. This is Heather Leach, she is our VP hi of people. compliance. So uh, <laughs> just know that when I'm saying things, I'll also be looking for Heather to see if she's shaking her head or freaking out or her head's exploding, it shouldn't be, I think we'll be okay. And then, uh, oh, by the way, I'm Ken Perry with the Knowledge Coop, and, uh, and if you are watching this and you want more information or uh, wanna check us out, we're knowledgecoop.com or on the medium where you're watching this now, or this is Andrea. Andrea is our national sales director, so Andrea at knowledgecoop.com if you have questions. So, uh, we got a few more people. Amy only periscopes tragically hip concerts. <laughs> I'm so old, I don't know what that means. Is that a good thing? Uh, That's funny. That's yeah, funny. what is That's tragically hip? Is that Nate's behind the camera right, right now? By the way, Nate is the one that. I get the camera. I can send it to you. He's the one who uh, is. Hey there. The man behind it all, and the reason that we did this. He was getting a lot of comments from the Facebook post that I put up on uh, Zillow, so he asked that, uh, he didn't ask, he's like, hey, we're going live tomorrow, so, uh, so be ready. So here we go. Again, if you're watching this, oh, oh, here's one big thing. If you're watching this live, we're gonna be able to respond to your comments wherever you are watching this. If you are watching this uh, right now and you're commenting, and you're like, why won't Ken talk about what I'm commenting about? It's because you're probably watching a recorded version and I can't see your comments. So that happened last time we went Facebook Live. This is only my second live I've ever done. But the first time we got a lot of people who were like, you know, like the next day, they're like, hey Ken. So, uh, all right, so let's do it. Really interesting stuff uh, going on on the marketing front. I finally decided after two or three years of being uber frustrated, seeing all of the uh, violations that were out there, seeing all the things that were going on, I finally decided to say something about it and actually call it out. Uh, and so I called out that if you are doing things that are a violation of RESPA, it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing or that they're you know, making you do it or whatever, you're the bad guy. So if you're doing things that are wrong, it's, uh, it's not okay to look at it and go, well, they're making me and you know, and everybody else doing it, and that's, you know, that's them, and it's on them or whatever, it's key that you understand that it, it really is you. You know, at the point that you sign an agreement with a Realtor, talking to my loan officer friends right now, when you sign an agreement to a Realtor, uh, you actually are um, participating. And it's illegal to give or receive a thing of value um, in exchange for referral of business. And so, uh, so anytime you're violating, you're just, you're just straight up in violation. So. Uh, let me back off for a second. I've got questions coming up from all over the place. I got Wallach and Volk in the house, which is awesome. I've got uh, down here on Periscope, I don't know if you guys are on Periscope, but on my Periscope feed right now, people are like, so what's RESPA? And somebody just answered what RESPA was, which was really cool. So Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. So, um, so big thing, a lot of talk about Zillow. And when I, when I refer to Zillow, Keep in mind that I have no ability to say whether something is illegal or legal because I'm not an attorney. Uh, also keep in mind that Zillow is simply a tool and that tool can be used for good or evil just like every other tool. And so I'm not, this is for the Zillow attorneys watching uh, right now, um, I, I'm not saying at all that what Zillow is doing is illegal. That's not my statement um, and that's not what my message was the other day. Um, because I don't have the ability to say that, it's totally up to you, but really it's about the use and abuse of that. So this all really began, um, what, Heather, five forever ago? Where, uh, I was gonna say five years, it's been forever. It's been a while. Um, where people are thinking, um, how do I get more business from my, uh, my realtors? And so uh, what they do is, originally they would go and they would buy them stuff, like in the old days they would buy them things and they would get business, and then in 1974, of course, RESPA passed. Turns out we can't do that anymore, and so, so ever since then, it's been this whole like, how do I earn the business of a realtor? 
And if realtors were fully not fully compliant with RESPA, then there would be no possible way to earn their business and their referrals outside of doing good work. And if you did great work, that's how you would get that business. However, some realtors are really excited about mortgage originators uh, giving them um, different benefits or whatever for doing business with them. And so uh, this thing called RESPA, which used to be controlled by HUD, now it's controlled by the CFPB or, or enforced and examined uh, by the CFPB. RESPA actually very clearly says that you cannot give anything of value in exchange for a referral of business. And a thing of value is defined by a giant paragraph, which includes things, but also includes like they break down. So special discounts, special promotions, special, you know, a chance to win kind of a thing. All that's in there. So uh, what HUD used to say is the best thing you can give in exchange for a referral of business is great service to the one that was referred to you. And outside of that, pretty hard to go um, above that and try and figure out another, you know, another thing to do. So, so it's just great service. So what people have done recently is there's a lot of marketing companies that go out and uh, those marketing companies will encourage people to uh, share uh, advertising between realtors and loan originators. How can I get more business by doing more stuff? So you have things like, um, like Zillow I mentioned, but you've also got um, you've also got things like uh, HBM or you have um, just different marketing programs where they've said, uh, go ahead and share in the, in the cost. What realtors do, and by the way, for those of you watching my, my personal Facebook, uh, you can also get this on the company Facebook Knowledge Group. Um, what, how this should work is if something is marketing a realtor, then the realtor should pay for the marketing. If something is marketing a loan originator, the loan originator should pay for the marketing. And when we start combining it, it gets really, really sticky. So in something like Zillow, uh, what we've seen is a loan originator and a realtor go and decide to, to participate in Zillow together. When you look at Zillow, you see the house, tons of information about the house, you see the realtor's information, and then you see the loan originator's information. And so, uh, and it's really marketing a house. So the fact that the loan officer's on there, that's your separate, you know, that's just the loan officer gets to be part of that, right? So if you were to think about like something that marketed mortgages, if it's marketing mortgage, it's really a mortgage originator, you know, marketing piece. If a realtor wants to be part of this, the realtor can then, you know, if they wanted to pay to be a portion of it, they're really being a portion of what's already a mortgage ad. So in Zillow, you go in and you pay, let's say 50, 50, um, you're saying that that ad is half mortgage and half origin and half realtor. If you're both getting value from the ad and it's and it's marketing like realtor on half of the screen and, and loan officer on the other half, then super easy for you guys to break that down. What we always tell people though is don't stop there, right? So as a loan originator wanting to participate in a realtor Zillow, um, how much would you pay for those clicks outside of Zillow, right? Do your click count, find out how much that would cost. Uh, and then also what's the realtor's relationship with other people on Zillow? And this is where it gets really sticky. If you look at the Zillow, uh, uh, the, their program, it said, last I checked it, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody watching on any of my channels, uh, but last time I checked it, it said that any loan originator may pay up to 50% of a realtor's advertising and no more than 90% may be paid for by more loan originators. So what you have is then a realtor paying for 10% of their total bill, which is, is them not paying even for you know, half of their ad. And what we get there is just an offsetting of the marketing expense for the realtor. So if a loan originator is paying, say three LOs are paying 30% a piece, there's not, a, a, the, the proportion is just way off. And now the realtor is getting stuff for free. If uh, my buddy on, uh, on Facebook there, Bill Black, came up with a really good uh, comment earlier where he said, He's working at a company where he's trying to call on these realtors and one of the realtors says, uh, you know, we can't send things to you because we get X paid for when we use this company. And what he's talking about is they're paying for our marketing expenses on this program that we use. You have to look at that and go, paying for the marketing expenses of the real estate agent is giving them a thing of value in exchange for a referral business. And when you read RESPA and you read everything around it, you'll see that it says, that you cannot offset costs that would normally be incurred by somebody in a position to refer you business. And so if you're offsetting the cost of a realtor and they go, hey, I'm not paying as much because this loan officer is paying that, 
that's where you start to run into to problems and that's where you see violations. The problem is when everybody does it, it doesn't seem so wrong. And that is the, the issue that, that's coming up is, well, my company says we can do 50-50. All right, well, you know, trust your own company compliance officer, but make sure you're not doing anything that's putting you individually at risk. And I think you might want to look into that. Like, hey, uh, Nate, was it Wells that had the loan officer just recently individually yeah. fined? 85000 Settled individually for $85,000 over a RESPA violation. Uh, the CFPB has the power to go straight to the individual loan originator. So you, you, know, you do what your compliance officers say, you know, where the limits are, but I would probably do additional research and go, does this, you know, is this a make sense thing for me to participate in this marketing if it's offsetting the cost of the, loan, of the realtor? Um, take for example, just another great example, continuing education classes. If CE costs money from everybody else and you deliver CE to them, but you don't charge them, you're offsetting a cost they would have incurred in order to get their license renewed. So it's those types of things we have to look at. And the comment I made the other day that I'll be making all year long in our live classes and in seminars that I speak at uh, is at some point you have to make the decision that you're not willing to participate. And if enough people do that, it just won't happen anymore. Like they won't ask you if they would feel like an idiot asking you for things. Great example is what happened with the appraisal system. Everybody's so furious about where appraisals are right now. It's a nightmare. Getting an appraisal takes way too long. It's incredibly overregulated uh, on you know just who can order appraisal, how you order appraisal, all that, and it's causing a lot of damage. Well, the reason that exists, or the reason that it kind of was triggered, is because the loan originators were telling appraisers we need it to be coming at this value, and they were really pushing and pushing and pushing, and the appraisers are like, all right. Well, that's the same thing that we're talking about here. If realtors are pushing, 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 and loan originators say, well, okay, I'll just do it, then both are in violation, and eventually that turns really bad. Look what's going on with appraisals, and now add that to today's current regulatory environment, and tell me they wouldn't do something insane that makes you not be able to speak to a realtor. I mean, it's just way too risky. So, by the way, comment, ask questions. Uh, I just had somebody join our Periscope who's French. Um, does anybody know any French? <laughs> so we got to get better. If we all say no, then we don't run into these types of things. But if we all say yes, then we do. You guys aren't asking questions, so I'm going to keep going. Oh, wait, yep, never done co-marketing due to this very reason. Thanks for the therapy. Oh, dude, you're welcome. Um, there are certain, by the way, uh, what is that? Somebody's phone's ringing on, a, I don't know how to mute. Some of you might remember uh, the MSA stuff that just happened when a company in uh, one of my favorite cities in America, which is Holland, Michigan, and that's where Lighthouse Title is. And some of you remember the Lighthouse Title case where uh, Lighthouse Title actually um, allegedly was part of an MSA. And that's the case where the CFPB came out and said, uh, MSAs are a thing of value under RESPA. That's an example I'm giving you of when they don't feel like they can control it, when we get crazy with it, they just go, all right, you know, and whether or not it says so in law, their interpretation ends up shaking up the entire uh, mortgage world. So um, that's what I'm saying. We got to get better uh, or bad things happen. So, well, can, can yep. we, so I think we need to interject a little bit. So the Wells Fargo, there's a blog post on our website, blog.knowledgecube.com. We should probably talk about the Wells Fargo issue because that was one of, the, one of the early additions where the CFPV went in. The company itself was able to say, sorry, and everything went straight up to that lender himself. Mm -hmm. And he was held liable in every point. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's what we're seeing here in, in that case especially, which was May of this year, I think it was mm -hmm. when, it, when it cleared. Uh, you know, he, his recommended, his point was, I was bullied, there's no way I was gonna be able to pay this, I can't get out from that. And the company just said, sorry, our hands are tied. You know, we, and, and that wasn't even in marketing. That was in mm -hmm. some title of work, but you have to know that even what you're doing now, if your compliance says it's okay, double check. Mm -hmm. Check with us, feel free, you know, check around because that's how we can tell what's happening and who's not getting the training they need. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even if it feels weird, usually a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, I used to talk about the Wawa meter in training, which is uh, the meter that goes off every time you think something might be, you know, not okay. Listen to that. And if it's going off and you're like, this just feels really bad, then, you know, stay away from it. We are, uh, one other thing that, that happened recently that I, I, I should point out, 
Um, when the CFPB did their big announcement about MSAs, when they released the case of uh, Lighthouse, um, one company went out and was like, right on, let's buy up all the MSAs. And uh, it's hard to be compliant when you're losing to a company that's buying all the MSAs. Uh, it's just difficult. Like, what are you gonna do, right? So you're gonna just give up all the future business. Um, it's just a matter of time in most cases before that stuff gets found out um, and they put a stop to uh, those things too. So, um, and when it does, it's usually really, really big. And what the CFP, CFPB has been doing lately is making it uh, really, really loud who they've, uh, who they've gone after and they're doing press releases with every one of their cases. Um, and the MMC, the Multi-State Mortgage Committee, uh, ended up doing quite a bit on press releases on the cases that they've actually settled recently. So it's just too risky an environment right now to participate. Um, and the hard part, of course, ethically is when somebody comes to you and says, if you won't do this, you don't get my business. It's hard because short term, you're gonna lose out. I will tell you that long term, it's way better to say no now and just run a, a completely successful business. And, and again, if nobody did it, if we all agreed like right now, the industry just said, all right, we're not gonna do it, then we wouldn't be asked anymore. If a, uh, man, it would be great if a realtor, oh, let me give you an example. I was gonna say, if a realtor asked you and you treated him like, what? Then it would be kind of fun. When I was an account executive working for a lender, loan officers would call me, it's back in 2000, 2001, and loan officers would call and go, hey, I've got this borrower I wanna send your way, but he's, uh, I gotta go stated. And I would always say, all right, well, why are you going stated? That was like, my, my question was why stated? And if their answer was, uh, well, because they don't make enough money to qualify, then I would come back to them and go, well, then why would I give them a loan? Like stated wasn't for when the borrower can't afford their loan, they just switch it. Stated was for, you know, other purposes. And so, but that was always like, I would always come back to them and say that. And of course I wouldn't get that deal, which was fine by me because I'm not doing that type of business. Um, where the borrower can't afford to get the loan and still, you know, we're gonna make, go out of our way to make it, uh, make it work for them. So it's that type of thing when a realtor says, here's what I want you to participate in. If you were to treat it and go, whoa, oh my gosh, I can't do that, here's why, look at this, and you were to educate them, I think enough people make them feel stupid and you might see a change in their behavior. And if you don't, you know, they're, they're kind of out there as well, it's their risk if they choose to do it. And, uh, you almost hope that one company picks them all up so that uh, it's easier for the CFPB to get to just that one company. Uh, questions coming out here. Uh, no, um, no, Zillow won't ever say, that I know, uh, will never say that they're wrong. Uh, and mainly because they're just a tool. So uh, they're a tool that people use. And again, you can use it for good or use it for evil. I would encourage Zillow when their attorneys do watch this and decide whether they want to hate me. Um, I would encourage anybody using um, or anybody working for Zillow when you're pitching it just to make sure that you press really hard on, on the on the press really hard on the RESPA issue and just say, hey, you need to really make sure that you clear this with compliance. Make sure that you're using this tool correctly, um, because they really could do quite a bit to stay compliant um, and ensure compliance, and they could do a lot to their policies that would make it even tougher to abuse the system. That would be awesome um, if the CFPB was to find Zillow. Uh, if they were to say, Zillow, what you're doing is allowing a lot of non-compliance, therefore, you know, we're gonna go after you. I'm telling you right now, it would be the largest and most successful RESPA cases ever because Zillow's got all the records of who's been paying for what. I mean, they're doing the invoicing, right? So they could tell you. So all the CFPB would have to do is go, hey, give us all your records, let's take a look at these. And they could, from their desk in Washington, D.C., do a huge enforcement order on everybody currently using it incorrectly. And in that case, guess who would be found guilty? Realtors and loan originators. So you would see a giant case, because remember it's illegal to give and it's illegal to receive a thing of value in exchange for the referral business. So the recipient is just as guilty as the one who's paying for it. Um, and by the way, let me just re-emphasize, I'm not an attorney. Maybe all of this is fine. Uh, maybe it's completely legal, I don't know. I'm just a dude that reads laws constantly. I, I like them. Um, so, but I'm not an attorney, so you should seek an attorney if you're in any of these contracts. Um, questions coming through, uh, why doesn't the CFPB go after him? I don't know. Uh, Heather does. I know. The Our VP of Compliance, Heather Leach. <laughs> 
The CFPB's told us in multiple forums that they want to um, hear through complaints and whistleblower items coming in. So they have enforcement authority over realtors, but they don't have examination authority. So it's something that they're never gonna pick up in an exam. And realtors are the ones that are using this a ton. And then loan officers are kind of jumping on board to subsidize some of the um, advertising costs. So the way that they're gonna catch them is by all of us reporting the realtors. Otherwise, they're never gonna get them. In an anonymous whistleblower fashion. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's that one. The whistleblower hotline is incredibly anonymous. Like they they won't release anything off of that. So if enough people do blow the whistle, that's how they get a lot of their enforcement is through that whistleblower. Um, okay, what about those builders promising? Uh, oh, by the way, Richard Chubb says hi from Hawaii. Uh, um, well, actually, so, Kim, before you go to that question, yeah. I think we should probably say uh, you mentioned a couple things. This isn't against again. This isn't against realtors, and it isn't against. Zillow, it, it's actually that a lot of people don't know. Right. It's totally. If I was a business owner, the first thing I'm going to do, somebody says, hey, will you help pay for this? And it's marketing. Yeah, if it gets my name attached to yours and we get more business, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's business one-on-one. Yeah. So more often than not, this can be about uh, just uncertainty in the law mm -hmm. and uncertainty in the rule and how yeah. it may apply in the future. Totally. Well, and so many great marketing ideas are against RESPA. Like I remember I was training a guy in my new loan officer training I did in, gosh, 04. I'm teaching this class and this guy walks up, he's like, it was like day two of class and he's like, dude, I got this great marketing idea and he had killer marketing ideas that were all violations of RESPA. Every one of the ideas was awesome, but uh, unfortunately we have this law that restricts us differently than it restricts other industries. He had come out of the car industry where kickbacks actually worked in some cases. So yeah, sometimes it's just, you know, oops. Um, or you didn't know or whatever. That's why we do these things. Uh, so question came up, builder paid closing costs. Oh my gosh, Nita. Nita's one of my favorite people in the world. What about those builders promising builder paid closing costs and uh, the lender is using premium pricing to pay the closing costs, the lender client is really, is really paying the closing costs. So um, it's a tough one. Uh, HUD was actually going after that type of thing where you got an incentive to use their in-house lender. HUD was, uh, when they rewrote RESPA back in 2010, I want to say, they wrote into it that you can't do that anymore. And the builders got super angry, went after HUD, threatened a lawsuit against HUD. They went into a room, and when they came out of the room, HUD had eliminated that um, from the rule. And then they did an advance notice of public rulemaking, which ANPR, which said, um, hey, we do want to look at this. You know, we are concerned. Have your people, you know, send us real cases. Well, the problem is, when a borrower gets five grand in, in granite countertops or whatever, they don't feel violated. And so they're not gonna write a letter on a complaint hotline about how they just got five grand in countertops. And that's usually the hard part about getting consumers to understand they were harmed. And not that they're always harmed in that situation, but I have seen where they are. Where the best argument I've seen on this, it doesn't come under RESPA, it comes under the FTC Act, I believe it's section five, where they talk about uh, tying. So if you're tying the, the incentive to the use of that originator and that originator is actually doing something wrong or, or doing something harmful to the consumer, technically the consumer can go and say, well, you made me use this because you gave me this free thing, but in order to get the free thing, I'd do this thing that ended up harming me. And so in that case, you could see you know, something on that, but we just don't see it very often. It doesn't come up. Uh, and right after they issued the announcement of, of uh, their proposed rulemaking, HUD lost power, CFPB stepped into RESPA, they just haven't come back to it yet. We haven't seen anything public on the whole builder paying, closing costs and all that. Bill, Bill, my, oh my gosh, one of my, I keep saying this favorite people, my favorite people are on this stream. Bill Trask, uh, one of my favorite dudes in the world, and Andrea. My crush. Say hi to Bill. Uh, Andrea has a major crush on Bill Trask. I love so, Bill. Uh, so Bill. <laughs> Um, asks, uh, he says, standard, rep standard RESPA analysis, if it makes good business sense, don't do it. You're totally right. Um, a lot of the stuff that's like, hey, this would be really good for business is super illegal. And especially if you're like, I can't believe nobody's doing it. Probably because it's illegal. Um, but there's, there's areas where if you just kill it, um, and let, let me give you this. If we spent as much time developing a system that, that delivers the most amazing customer experience ever, as we spend on trying to come up with crafty plans to get realtor business, loan officers wouldn't need the referrals, they'd be bringing the referrals. Um, I'm, I always talk to my loan officer uh, or my, my friends who buy houses and I wanna know how the process went 
um, it, it has to be nails. And if we're continually doing it how we always did it, we're going to lose to the bigger companies. And instead of focusing on how do I buy the business, focus on how do I put that money into a better system. Uh, total plug here, but Mortgage Coach, if you guys aren't using Mortgage Coach, start there. Like, have a system where we're in 2016, we should be delivering term, not terms, but delivering um, all the options to the borrowers and, and letting them see the math. We should be doing that digitally. And that's the type of thing that I'm talking about where get better at the experience and, and realtors will wanna send you business because you're just killing it. You're closing the loans um, and you're doing it right. So start looking at how do we make this experience amazing. Um, one thing I would, I would ask you all, so loan officers and realtors alike, one thing I would ask you is please spend way more time uh, with your first time home buyers. There are so many first time home buyers. The market's going crazy. People are wanting to buy houses again. Millennials are jumping in and buying houses. If we don't have a process where somebody who's brand new in the business gets a really amazing explanation about everything, if we don't have that, we need to build that because they need that. If you look at the HUD report that came out in December, it's their annual report. They have stats in there on, on people and, and, and their delinquency rate when they've received counseling. It's ridiculous. If you get counseling before getting a, a mortgage, you're more likely to pay your loan by a giant percentage. So why don't we spend a lot more time counseling those first time home buyers, making sure they actually know what they're getting and they're making a good decision. And that's what I'm talking about. Spend way more time focusing on the quality of the experience and less time focusing on, you know, how do I make sure I keep my realtors happy by paying for whatever it is that they want. Um, watch out for client appreciation parties. Uh, watch out for referral parties. It's just amazing to me how many people have just not paid attention at all um, and continue to violate this stuff. Uh, one other thing I would say is if you work in a company where you're a great loan officer but so many people at your company are violating, you have to look at, you know, is this a company that I can believe in if we've got that many violations happening? Um, because you're known by the company you keep. My dad used to always say that. Um, when you hang out with people who are doing things wrong, uh, you're kind of looped into that and you wanna pay attention to, am I working with a company that's, that's in build mode? Uh, if you guys are working on a, um, uh, as a loan officer just kind of out there and you don't know and this is like new to you, seek out more information. Get educated on this stuff. Uh, we've got tons of, uh, of classes for you, so uh, hit us up. Check our website, knowledgekeep.com. Kind of wrapping up here. If anybody has any more questions, hit me up with them. Otherwise, we are going to uh, let you roll. Uh, just so you know the count, Periscope is losing to Facebook company, which is just barely beating Facebook uh, personal. So anyway, check out knowledgekeep.com. Hopefully this was uh, exciting for you. I know I loved it. Like, um, like the page. Like the page. Oh. While you're on share. Facebook, click like, click share. Uh, we'll post this one so that people can see it later. You guys have a great day. If you want anything done on these types of conversations on Facebook Live, then uh, let us know. Uh, if you're in Austin, we'll be in Austin, Texas in like three weeks doing CE. If you're in Seattle, Everett area, we'll be up there. We'll be kind of all over. Check our website for classes you can go into. So, uh, and then share this video out with anybody that you want. And I can't wait to get letters uh, or uh, <laughs> posts. Um, I'm guessing that my certified uh, mail from Zillow. I know. No, uh, remember I didn't, you know, I'm not an attorney, so it's up to you. You guys have a great day signing off everything.